After extended periods of steady summer rains, one can expect to find a bonanza of mushrooms in undisturbed forests of eastern North America. In this video, I'm going to attempt to identify a handful of them in a forest preserve outside of Chicago. Big caveat here, I'm only going to be looking at macro physical traits. Traditional mushroom ID would involve further examination, such as recording taste and smell and looking at spores under a microscope. And then contemporary mushroom ID goes even further, looking at chemical composition and DNA. Suffice to say, mushroom taxonomy is a challenging and evolving field, and future mycologists will likely decide that many of our current taxonomic arrangements are inaccurate. So all that said, I'm just going to step through some basic physical traits to look for, and any identifications that I make should be taken with a grain of salt. This first mushroom patch I found was growing between basswood and hophorn beam trees. Right away we can see it is a gilled mushroom. Its cap has a slight bowl shape, and it's about as wide as the mushroom is tall. The next important thing to look for with gilled mushrooms is to see if the gills are free from or attached to the stem. In this case they are attached. As we look more closely, we can also see that this mushroom is exuding a milky latex. And another trait is that it breaks apart very easily. Good chance this mushroom is in the genus Lactarius. There are a few other genera with gills and milky caps, but Lactarius is the most common and widespread, and the crumbly flesh really points to Lactarius. The next type of mushroom I found was growing next to a white oak tree. This is also a gilled mushroom, and it has flaky patches at the base of its stem. Looking at a developing mushroom first, we see there are patches on the cap and a flaring ring around the stem underneath the cap. I sliced one of these in half to determine its gills are not attached to the stem. It was easier to see it had free gills on the fully developed mushroom. Plus we can see it has a flat cap. Now I should have been more careful to dig the base of the stem out of the ground because it would have given me a few more characteristics to look at. But the combination of free gills, patches on the cap and on the stem base, and a ring on the stem all point to this being an amanita. This next mushroom was probably the most common in the forest, which is one clue as to what it is. It has gills, and its cap is slightly bowl-shaped and brightly colored. The stem did not break free from the gills when I made a cross-section, but I really had to look closely to see that the gills were attached to the stem, because there was a notch where they came together. But the trait that makes me feel most confident identifying this as a russula is how brittle and crumbly and white the flesh is. Russellas are closely related to the Lactarius mushroom we saw earlier, which also has crumbly flesh. But Russellas do not exude a milky latex. These mushrooms are very common, and the lack of other identifying features that would point to another type of mushroom makes me feel good declaring this is a Russella. One thing that might have clinched it but I neglected to do was to see if the stem snaps like a piece of chalk when bent. Right away we can see this next mushroom I found has some of the same traits as the amanita we saw earlier. The previous one was yellow colored, and so this one is clearly a different species, but I believe it is also an amanita. This time I made sure to dig up the entire stem so that we can look at the base of it. First things first, we can see that its gills are free from the stem, and that it has a flaring ring on the stem. Then the bulbous shaped base of the stem has concentric rings and flaky patches on it. And perhaps the most interesting characteristic are these raised scales or warts on its cap. Scales are common on many mushrooms, but all these traits added together again point to Amanita as the genus. Next up, we have a mushroom that does not have gills under its bun-shaped cap. 
Instead, the surface resembles that of a sponge. Looking at a cross-section of the cap, we can see that it actually consists of tightly packed tubes which are holding its spores. This is the only characteristic we need to identify this mushroom as a member of the Bolete family. Breaking it down further by genus or species is more challenging and beyond the scope of this video. But certain traits to key in on are whether or not it bruises and what color the bruising is, and whether or not it has a ring on the stem. Something else to notice about these particular mushrooms, other than their gigantic size, is that they are in a state of decay, and there is a white mold all over them. Mold is a type of fungus too, and so we have a fungus eating a fungus here, which is called mycoparasitism. This mold probably belongs to the genus Hypomyces, where each species infects different genera of fungi. The bolete mold is my safest guess as to which species it is but there are others which can attack certain members of the Bolete family. This next mushroom has a very distinctive shape which can be described as a type of coral fungus. Many mushrooms take on a similar shape to this and they are not all related and so coral fungus is a colloquial term and not a taxonomic name. This particular one features branches that are strictly straight and ascending, hence the species epithet. The name Romeria stricta should probably represent a whole group of potential species awaiting contemporary study, since mycologists have begun to separate several similar species. Except for the mold, all of the mushrooms that we've seen so far today are mycorrhizal, which means they are engaged in a mutually beneficial relationship with trees. The mushroom helps the tree absorb water and nutrients, and the tree provides sugars and amino acids to the mushroom. The ecology of Romeria, however, is not known for certain. Most are thought to be mycorrhizal, but the wood inhabiting species could be saprobic, which means they survive by decomposing organic material and using it as food. I'll end this video featuring a plant I saw flowering near all of these mushrooms. This is the woodland sunflower. At the base of its flower head, it has light green phyleries arranged in several overlapping series. It has opposite leaves, with each pair rotating 90 degrees from the pair above and below. The trait that sets this plant apart from other Helianthus species is the sessile or nearly sessile leaves. Other sunflowers all have longer petioles, 